Today we're back, my friends, to talk about the open field in Call of Dragons. What is Chiskel Gaming going to be using this season? And what do I think in general is the very best you can do in season T1 in Call of Dragons? In this video, I'm going to break it all down. What are the hero pairings? What are the best artifacts? What are the best pets? And oh, maybe a heck, should we go look at talents? We'll talk about what are the best talents. So stick around in this video for everything you need to know to run some crazy marches in Call of Dragons. Let's get after it. Hello, my friends, welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons, and something funky happens in season T1. That is, uh, I think our fourth season of playing this game, which is that you get a bonus to the amount of stamina you can have. Now this, you may be like, Chiskel, this is not a policies video. What are you doing here? I want your open field list. Well, this dramatically influences the open field list because you get 50% more stamina base on every one of your heroes, that means that you want better combos that you run out more frequently rather than lots of combos. And that means that when you level up, you really ought to be focused. So what is Chiskel game, uh, Gaming leveling and what am I planning to bring? So what I'm leveling and what I'm planning to bring goes as follows. I am leveling up one Mage March, two Marksman Marches, one Cavalry March, and one Infantry March. And it, I really wanted to mention at the start here, like what is Chiskul leveling? Because what you do at the start of the season and what you ultimately end up fielding are two kind of different ideas. And I know that might sound a little bit weird, but let me explain a little bit further. We could have fighting, who knows? Pro I think in our season, it's going to be kind of far out. But if you had fighting early on, obviously you want to be able to use all your troop types, even if that's not like the final set of things that you plan to run. So I'm going to show you the final things I'm planning to run. But at the start of the season, I wanted to make sure that I I was leveling up different things for each troop type. And this season, I started leveling up more heroes that were versatile. I prioritized it. So instead of doing Bakshi, this time around, I did Thea. Instead of doing Nico, this time around, I did Hosk. And that is because they're just universal, well-rounded heroes. I don't know if that was a mistake, given that we can now have 150 stamina, but it seemed like a really good idea at the time to have that versatility. Now you may be looking at the artifacts and pets here and you may be like, whoa, is that what you're using? No, of course it's not what I'm using. <laughs> of course that's not what I'm gonna be using in the end, right? Like the striped bear with Kanara makes no sense. Okay, I've got a, a Bruin bear over here with, with these marksmen. What's that doing here? Well, remember when you level your heroes, you also level your pets. So public service announcement, it almost doesn't even matter what pet you're using. Just make sure that as you level at the start of a season, you pick the pets that actually need experience onto them. And that's exactly what I've done because the majority of the pets I'm actually gonna use when I throw down are all max level. So let's shift gears and talk about, all right, Mr. Cheese Ghoul, what are you going to throw down with? And the first thing we need to talk about is the um, combos I'm going to use as a Spring Wardens flyer. And hey, look, if you're not Spring Wardens and you're not using Flying Cavalry, you can use the timestamps, you could jump ahead if you want. But these are sort of my special operations teams that do really cool things disrupting the backline. Now look, I'm doing a lot of broadcasting that I'm gonna disrupt the backline. So will I be able to do that or not? Who the heck knows? But for the first 24 hours of a pass opening, your flags are still pretty far away from each other and it takes a long time to get there. So. I really like to catch marches that are out of position using flying cavalry. And in that regard, I'm using Ferrandil and I'm using Fregar. okay? Now, they both fly. It's not amazing synergy, but you gotta find four flyers to run two marches, and that's what I'm doing. The other march that I'm running is Thea, and I'm pairing with uh, Craig. And the reason that I am pairing with Craig is because Thea is going to boost your skill damage dealt, and then Craig does fat AoE damage, and it's actually super legit. Now, in terms of artifacts, I happened to get the Oath of Storm Peak really pretty, I mean, pretty high. I got it to level four, and, I, and that happened because I was going for the Spirit Bone Torque, and I think it was just there. It is what it is. And I unfortunately only got this to four. I didn't get it to five. Again, is what it is. Hopefully, I'll finish this thing off. I found this thing to be be pretty mid, but I'm going to try it out just for the passive buff here, which like is basically a constant uptime on 8% all damage. Really good. Yes. Yes. It's very good. So I'm going to play with this more and see what I can do with it. And I definitely fooled people a shocking number of times by summoning a clone. Like it's actually disgusting how many times I fool people. It's, 
I should make a, a, a video. I should record it. And just, it's, yeah, it's funny. It's funny when you pull it off. And it's way more frequent than I thought. Um, and then on the Craig, uh, well, okay. Also, by the way, Berserk Phaedrake. All right. Um, this is not the final form of skills that I would put on a Berserk Phaedrake. I still, although it's a one-star talent skill, like the attributes are pretty mid here, honestly. Uh, and the skill slots are really bad. So like, I really need to get more skill slots on this thing, honestly. So six skill slots. High agility is what I want and high strength and not the luck doesn't really matter all that much. I covered that in the Berserk Phaedrake video, of course, way in depth. Uh, from here, right? The second March, the Thea Craig, we're using the Spring Blades and we're using the Golden Rock. The Spring Blades are here just because they are the best cav damage artifact and the damage is undeniable man it's so good it's and so much utility you throw it out there you can call it back when you want this is a lot of damage all right and when we gain passion we gain a keen buff 30 percent attack for five seconds well good news the golden rock if you watch my video about how this thing works this golden rock is going to give me the passion buff that's what the uh, talent skill does. It gives you the passion buff until you gain passion from your legion, and then you start doing damage instead of passion buffs. But because this legion is never going to actually uh, do passion on its own, it never switches the golden rock into damage mode, which means every time the golden rock triggers here, I'm getting 30% attack from the extra effect on the spring blades. Kind of cool, huh? The more you know, folks, the more you know. Pets are very complicated in this game. This is even probably not the Golden Rock I will ultimately be using. This is the one I am leveling. I have a max level one star one, and this probably ends up being the one that I'll use. Um, I need to tweak it a little bit more, but like agility is strangely irrelevant on this particular version of this pet, because remember, I don't plan to activate the damage mode ever. All that I'm doing on this pet is getting the rage accumulation speed buff, 5% buff for five seconds, which like, by the way, has insane synergy with Thea, like actually insane. Um, if we show you the talent builds on these particular heroes, um, I can show you why this is so nuts. Thea's build I've actually been putting in as I go here because I'm using her as a primary to level. Uh, but whenever Thea gains a buff, she also gains 15 rage. So... Yeah, very cool synergy with the Golden Rock yet again. So I'm gaining Passion and I gain Rage, and that also triggers 30% attack buff. The more you know, folks, the more you know. Um, and then on Ferrondale, I haven't built him yet, but I'm almost certainly going to go for a Reticent Silence build. So I'll probably go for the Slow um, and then get, get just a lot of debuffs probably one point into Tremble and four points into Ambush and, and get this reticent pickup and then go into the Cavalry Tree for some March Speed. That's almost certainly the plan. Haven't finalized it yet, so I'm just kind of chilling with him, all right? Uh, but this brings us to the main lineup, the thing you're here for. And if you've made it this far into the video, I appreciate you. Throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. The combos that I want to run in the open field are as follows, and I need to actually get them back into the mix here. So we got to get Madeline, we got to get Garwood. I have not even started leveling them yet, which is fine. And this is what I actually want to run. Double infantry, single mage, double archer. And there's a lot that we could talk about here. And I'm, you know, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to move around a lot of things that like I'll have to fix later for my leveling. But um, we're going to use Gorish and Skogel, and I am going to continue to use the Venom Lizard. Now, look, I think that undoubtedly you can get some better results with a Bruin Bear, but you could also get worse results with a Bruin Bear. So Gorish and Skogel together, Spirit Bone Torque with the Venom Lizard is actually really solid, and it lets me just chill on which pets I'm working on for now. Right? Because you can only work on so many pets. All right. And like, yeah, I could throw a bunch of one star skills onto another pet. And like, maybe, maybe the Bruin Bear would be fine. But like, I would rather concentrate on a few pets. And like, the Venom Lizard's actually super legit. Made a video about that, covered it, explained the rationale with the DPS, the whole nine yards. Which brings us to, of course, Madeline and Garwood. Now, this march is here to live. Like, this infantry march is here to live. I have the dragon scale armor. I am here to live. The pet that I would use is going to be the Frost Bear. That is because I have a decent Frost Bear, and I could instead go a more tanky route 
and go for a stripe bear. Um, I've got it all kind of set up. Like I have this eight skill slot stripe bear ready to go, which is actually kind of, now that I look at it, it's just kind of decent, but it has the eight skill slots, which is like, all said and done, that's actually kind of nuts with the high endurance. Not too high. I mean, strength is pretty good, but not insane. Agility is kind of low. Whatever. Um, and, and what I would do is I would transfer onto that a one-star skill. I've got one just kind of cooking over here, right? Um, so I could, you know, transfer over all these skills, and it would still keep its eight skill slots. And this stripe bear would basically evaporate when you do that. But uh, the thing is that I've already got a really good... Frost bear. So I'm just going to use the frost bear, right? The frost bear makes it so that when you use a shield, you have a 40% chance to deal damage back to the target. I don't think this has a range, which is really good. Um, I think it's a very far range. So yeah, you get some really sick damage with the Madeline shield plus this. Um, in some ways, I've found myself liking the Venom Lizard more, which I was not expecting. But the Venom Lizard has a limit to only one distribution of poison per turn, whereas there is not a limit on the frost bear to the number of targets that can take damage. So this thing can scale more, but the duration is not as good as your venom lizard. All that to say, this is the combination I'm using for my infantry. Now from here, Lily and Velen, man, you just throw this artifact on here. The infernal flame is so good. It's been so good. I'm going to use that, and I'm going to use a Sapphire. I mean, the Sapphire is a classic. I have not deployed skills onto my Sapphire yet. Good news. My patience has been rewarded. I was able to get a Sapphire that meets the breakpoint conditions for the double split pain bloom. If all of that sounds like I just whispered a bunch of gobbledygook, you're definitely want to gonna <laughs> go check out the Sapphire Fade Drake video I made talking about the breakpoint for split Pain Bloom. So this is the one I'm going to use. I still have to build it though. Um, and I'm taking my time because I don't have to yet. And you should always wait with pets until you're about to fight. Because what if I deployed all my skills and then I got a two-star talent skill? I would feel really, really dumb. Really silly. All right. So I'm chilling. Now, there are many good alternatives, by the way, to this terrifying Inferno artifact. If you wanted some alternatives here, you would be looking at any number of artifacts. For example, if you spend on the Mirage Orb, I think it could actually just be better. This thing seems very, very strong. Very strong. Very strong. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to have a more free to play friendly route, the uh, Magic Bomb is classic, very, very powerful, great artifact, 10 out of 10. And if you're lucky enough to get a bunch of skills onto, uh, let's see, the Phoenix Eye, this thing slaps, man. It's so good. It's actually crazy how good this thing is. Also, the Breath of Gigantus is very good. For me, it's sitting on the bench this season, which is really tragic. But given that the stamina limit went up and I don't plan to run more mages, um, that's where it's at for me. Now, I could change my mind. I could decide there are moments in time where I want to have like a three to, you know, four March mage ball, and then it's definitely in the lineup. But for now, it's on the bench. All right. From here, we got to talk about Sindrian and Fragar, and this is a tale as old as time. I won't tell it for too long because it's pretty self-evident. Sindrian and Fragar have insane synergy. I've proven the Night Rock is the way to go, and I've even proven mathematically that this build is the way to go. I mean, I spent countless hours. It was pretty insane how many hours I spent actually looking in battle logs to measure the difference in the amount of damage that was elevated. And this is the correct build, like not a good build, but the correct build. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, I took number one for damage though in the, uh, elite raid in the world first on the dragon. So like, and, and oh, yeah, yo, the other people in there are not slouches. Let me tell you. All right. Shadow flight artifact here. Um, this is the gold crest. Very good. Uh, if you didn't want to use Gold Crest or didn't have Gold Crest, Shadow Blades is amazing. Absolutely fantastic. It's almost criminal that this thing is sitting on the bench for me. Um, very, very, very strong. All right. Um, now, also, there are some new artifacts that like could also be really outstanding, like the Sunflame Hammer. I mean, we haven't even really talked about these because we haven't yet had an event to access them. I think we will get these soon. Rhapsody, could this be one good? Diffuse damage? Yeah, this could be good too. Yeah, no, this could be great. Ra Lakeside Rhapsody looks really good too. There are going to be some great epics over here. Uh, I mean, truly great epics that, that are going to be viable. Anyways, 
Um, this is what I'm using. From here, we've got Kanara and Hosk together. Uh, and of course, I'm not gonna be using the Stripe Bear. I have that there now for leveling purposes. But what I'm actually going to use is, of course, the Snow Peak Rock. Um, we've also got the Rattle Spear. This combo is also kind of like Tail as Old as Time. I don't know that I need to tell that tale all over again. But this combo is all about normal attacks, counterattacks. That's the whole thing. Rattle Spear is going to trigger a whole heck of a lot from Kanara's Awakening, doing a defense break effect, which then gives a solid ignore defense for seven seconds really outstanding. So the combination here is great. The Snow Peak Rock is good, but overall as a pet, I would say it's kind of mid. Um, it's a little bit weird, but like the damage factor is like not enough here. It really isn't. 30% um, chance to get 117 damage factor. This is on a one-star skill with a 5.09 growth rating on luck. Like you can't get much better than this. And it's only 117 damage factor. It, it Compared to other pets, it, it just ain't it. Especially because it's a 30% chance to trigger. It's not even like, oh yeah, every time you defense break, you get this. No, like you defense break and you only have a 30% chance to inflict this. It's not, it, this ain't it, man. This ain't it. But um, this pet is somewhat built for me. Uh, I do, fierce attack is good. The Shield Breaker is actually a questionable choice, but I already had it on there because I built it before I really knew what I was doing, but whatever. Um, Chain Strike is extremely good. I've covered that in separate videos. So that's the combination I'm using in the field. And I think that this combination, plus spamming my Elixirs, plus 150 stamina, means I probably don't need more pairs. I just need good pairs, and these pairs are very good. And that's the game plan. That's where I'm at. Now, all that said, we can get a look at some of the talents that I've built, although a lot of them I like haven't leveled up yet, so this won't be too meaningful, but um, actually, no, hold up. You know what? Hold up. What am I doing? I haven't leveled them up yet. I can't show you their talents. Surely they're still saved in Roots of War, right? The old battle sink. We look over here at the heroes. Surely I've still got them. We go to Gorash. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, this is a build that I've used for Gorash in the past. I think it's really good. We go and we elevate the counterattack damage. We increase our buff duration by a second. And very importantly, we go for Unyielding Spirit. This thing slays, baby. It absolutely slays. Uh, de decrease the hero skill damage taken by 8% for 5 seconds. That is sick. So good. All right. Uh, from here, I can show you the Kanara build. Kanara, we're going for that Reticent Silence build that we were talking about earlier. I did do a split here. I didn't really need to necessarily, but the defense break effect you definitely want to get because you have a Snow Peak Rock. So like that's very important. And then I went over here to take Shower of Blows, but this is when I was pairing with Nico. So I'm going to have to rethink that a little bit for the Hosk pairing because like dealing 8% more skill damage on a rage skill that doesn't do skill damage is pretty irrelevant, you know? So gonna have to rethink that choice. I don't think this is it either, Bullseye. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll make Hosk the primary, TBD. T TBD, um, mm, I probably don't want to because Kanara Snow Peak. I don't know, we'll see if I end up regretting leveling Hosk. Maybe I should just level Nico. Dude, Nico's awakened, that's probably, I don't know. Um, uh, you can tell I'm a little on the fence with that one. Um, Madeline over here, classic build. Um, we've gone in and, and we took cool headed. You could debate whether or not you get this infantry march speed, taking less hero skill damage. I, I probably would do this instead this time around. Uh, I definitely want the counterattack, the damage redux when surrounded, and extra chance to counterattack is pretty nice here. I also then go in and, of course, take Unyielding Spirit. Very critical. And I probably would not take Encouraging Dance. I would take instead All Conquering. Wow. Actually, several modifications I'm making to this build, which is pretty surprising. So we can go and make this now because there's actually so many changes. I'm a little bit surprised, but... They're pretty straightforward, right? So what I've come to appreciate over time is that I don't really value the march speed quite as much. Probably take this instead. Um, I think I took cool headed here. When your Legion casts rage skills, they gain shelter, increasing their defense. That sounds right. Uh, and then from here, taking all conquering. From here, increase the counterattack. Yeah. 
damage, redox when you're surrounded, extra counterattack chance. Okay, this is looking much better. This is where you go for march speed if you want some speed, and I do feel like some is warranted. Um, and then you can either reduce your normal attack damage taken or improve your healing. You know what's funny? Because I'm doing healing, God, I need to reset this again. Hold on, I'll be right back. I mean, it's funny because I'm pairing with Garwood, it opens up so many different options, which is a part of what makes this game so fun and what makes a talent tree well-designed, in my opinion. So I, I instead opted for the healing, Heaven's Blessing, you know, 5% extra healing received. And because Garwood is enhancing my healing by so much, I instead went for Rectification, which gives me a small chance to heal. But when you heal... Garwood is going to go in and then have a chance to give you damage dealt. So, yeah, no, like taking a heal means more damage dealt. That's a huge win. 30% more damage dealt. So, like, yeah, that's, that's, you take the heal. Gosh, the, what a cool combo, man. What a cool combo. Uh, from here, there's only a couple more combos we need to talk about. Sindrian, I don't need to talk about this a lot. I spent a lot of time figuring out what the best build is, and this ain't it. <laughs> this is the best build right here. This is what you do, all right? Um, this build is the max damage. It's so good. You could ditch March Speed for even more damage. Damage, but dude, you slay with this. I like the March Speed a lot, so I'm going to keep it. From here, and trust me, like I tested, trust me, that build is Biss. I, I spent a lot of time on that. Um, it, it's a point of pride, you know? And a lot of people, you know, they, 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 you know, they look at my guide and say, oh, here's my talent build. And they don't disclose they got it from me, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, all right, so this is what I'm gonna use on Lily. Let's double check it real quick. We go and we increase the hero's skill damage. I absolutely wanna generate rage because, hmm, this is interesting. I I mean, Lily and Velen paired together, this, you could justify Boiling Blood or Spirit of Rage. Either one of those is actually very good. Then Detached, less normal, more skill damage is great. Um, here we're going for more crit chance and crit damage, which is fantastic. And then boom, every time your Legion casts a Rage skill, they deal more hero skill damage. I don't know if I would take this one. Um, eh, I mean, 8% hero skill damage. Actually, that adds up. I would say both of these are justifiable, honestly. Like, they're, they're good for different reasons. They, they actually are good for different reasons. Um, and this has, does this have a cooldown? It does not have a cooldown. That's pretty good. Uh, and then over here, yeah, health is good. March speed is a must, in my opinion. Hero skill damage is very good. And then either one of these is fine. I think that the odds that you're going to hit, like, that many targets is pretty low. So I'm not really on the energy boost plan. I'm more on like the sure thing, which is that, you know, you gain defense penetration before casting your skills, ignoring 10% of the target's defense for five seconds. I think that's where I'm at these days. It's, it's consistent value, right? So there you go. Everything that your boy Chiskel Gaming is planning to use in the field, the talents, the pets, the artifacts, holy moly. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. This season should be a good time. I think we're going to get some pretty good fighting as well. So subscribe so you don't miss it. And until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.